What's up everyone, it's your boy Rad 89 here bringing you another review today and for today's Rad Movie Review we are going to be discussing Savage Land from 2015. This is a mockumentary style found footage film that got recommended to me by Angel and Al. I was recently on the Voices from Mausoleum podcast where we did a Conjuring live stream so be sure to go swing over to that YouTube channel and check out that video and yes on that video we were discussing some found footage stuff that got brought up and Savage Land is a film that I never saw that they both checked out and they recommended I see because I was talking about Poughkeepsie Tapes which is another found footage film that just didn't leave any impressions on me I just greatly was like ah that was nothing to me so I wanted to check this one out and see my thoughts and my feelings on it so today we're going to discuss all the positives the negatives my rating and then I'm going to send you all home so let's do this Roll it. So as I said in my intro, when it comes to found footage, I'm a very hard sell. It's not one of my favorite subgenres in horror, so it's one that for for the films, I am probably like kind of a kind of a dick. I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably kind of mean. I have to, you know, kind of, you know, readjust myself and like realize that I am going into a found footage film sometimes because like I said, it's not one of the subgenres that I dive into a lot in terms of horror. The found footage films really got to work hard for me to support them and stuff like that. So today let's talk about Savage Land, which is a mockumentary style found footage film that follows a man named Salazar who it's a, it's a case study basically where they treat it like a criminal case type thing. Salazar is arrested for a horrible crime of apparently annihilating like a whole town of people. It's a very small town that sits on the border of Arizona and Mexico and Salazar is an illegal immigrant and like I said he gets arrested and charged with the murder of a lot of people but during that night Salazar had a camera with him and was able to photograph some stuff and we get to as the film progresses really find out what happened that night and there's multiple different sides so it's kind of like we're gonna give you this side of the story this side of the story and the third part of the story you know what I mean to kind of give you the full picture and like I said this is a mockumentary style so let's get right into the positives right away is that in terms of found footage and the mockumentary style this is much better than Poughkeepsie tapes in terms of the acting in terms of the execution and all that kind of stuff I think this one is uh, leagues above Poughkeepsie tapes you know this does feel at some points it does feel real like it's a real story and you're watching real people and cops and detectives and lawyers talk about this case and everything so I love that aspect of it another thing is that like I said they stay true to the style but they also bring in another subgenre of horror this is going to be kind of a mixed and negative they bring in another subgenre of horror that I really can't tell you because I don't want to spoil it just in case you haven't seen this film. It's currently streaming on Tubi and YouTube for free if you want to check it out. But there's another subgenre of horror that I was appreciated that they brought into this film and it's very unique and something different that I haven't seen in terms of the way they do it and style wise. But it did leave me wanting more and it didn't give me enough. So that was kind of the mixed aspect of it, you know what I mean? Is that I appreciated them bringing in this subgenre of horror and like I said, it was new, stylish, something I haven't seen done before, but they didn't give me enough of it. And I was like, felt very let down and wanting more. Another positive though is that I think, yeah, like I said, the acting in terms of the characters and they feel like real lawyers, they feel like a, a, a writer that's just writing about the story or there's one of my favorite parts of the movie is there's a guy who's walking the path that Salazar did that night with a film crew. So you're going to the different places where he started and you're walking through the town and he's showing you he went here and then he came here and met this person and then they show you the photographs that Salazar took also that night. So. That's probably my favorite part of the film is that section of it where we're following that guy going through the path that Salazar took that night. But let's get into the mixed and negatives because sadly I was savagely kind of disappointed by this film. No pun intended. I did watch this with my daughter and we did give this a full shot. Watch this film. And in terms of mockumentary style and found footage, it sucks because when I go into this film... I like crime dramas and I like crime documentaries about, you know, serial killers and the real stuff and everything. But when I go into those, what really just takes it up a notch is that you know it's real. You know they're talking about real people and they're giving you as much as the story they can and trying to give you, you know, enough pieces that you yourself can uh, come up with your own conclusions to the story and everything. And this film tries to do that. 
But what sucks is that in my brain, I already went into this and you know it's fake. And this film, there's aspects and points where it does feel like a real story, but towards the end and just as it's going and the execution when we get into the latter half of the film, it's just, it's very dry for me. It's very slow. And like I said, one of those films that I just, it didn't leave a lasting impression. You know what I mean? That's what one thing that kind of sucks is I wanted, I wanted to like this film so much more. And like, spe especially with the fact that they brought in a certain subgenre of horror that I'm very fond of and they use it, but it doesn't, it still leaves me with wanting more and not in a good way where that was so amazing. I can't wait. I want more. I want a sequel. Not that kind of, kind of like, oh, they left me hanging and there wasn't, you know, they could have did this and they could have did that, but they just didn't. So that's what I mean. That's the kind of leaving me wanting more kind of feeling that they had when I was after watching this film. Another negative for me is that kind of what happened throughout the night, I figured it out about 20 minutes into the film. So there's about like, there's a certain section of the film when you get to about the 25, 30 minute mark. And I was like, yep, I kind of know what happened that night already. And that's what sucks is this film had potential. It had expectations and I understand they were trying to do something different, something new and stylish. And that's a big reason why it gets a big bump in the scores because they really swung for the fences in terms of adding in the mockumentary style, the found footage, that other subgenre of horror, and really kind of blending them together. They swung for the fences, but for me it was a miss because it's just pacing wise, it's so slow, it drags. And it's something that I figured out more less than halfway through the film. It wasn't even halfway through yet, and I already kind of figured out what happened. And yeah, for me being like set found footage, I'm a hard sell. I really need more stuff to go down. In terms of found footage films that I love, I love the VHS films, the franchise. I love Deadstream, you know, Spree, Alone with Her. Those are some found footage films that I really freaking enjoy. Wreck is another good one, but those are films that have more creepy stuff going on they're scarier and there's just more action there's more horror there's more graphic stuff going on and this film is much different than that and i understand that and another thing too is this film had three different writers and three different directors who all wrote and directed this film and i feel like you could kind of feel the styles clashing against each other and especially when you think about all the ideas that are in this film it feels like three different people had like, you know, three different ideas and they're like, let's get together and like, what, well, I got this part, you have that part and then you have the ending. Let's just put it together and make this movie. So yes, yeah, Savage Land was one that did leave me disappointed and I really, really wanted to enjoy this film more. Like I said, it isn't an awful film. I still would recommend people go check out this film. Like I said, this is a film that I think a lot of people could get something out of. But in terms of me, my personal taste and what I enjoy, it did leave me disappointed in this. For rating, for Savage Land, it's going to sit at a 5 out of 10 in my book. Very average rating. And a reason that it gets bumped up to a 5 is mainly because that they did swing for the fences. And they did really try to throw in a new stylish way to talk about some things. And like I said, this is a better executed version of a mockumentary film than Poughkeepsie Tapes. So that's another reason why it gets bumped up in the score, because I believe I gave Poughkeepsie Tapes like a 3 out of 10. That was not good. Not a good movie. It's the definition of everything I hate about found footage is Poughkeepsie Tapes. But this one, yes, a lot better, but still left me wanting so much more and just uh, not enough action. The pacing was bad and the clashing of the styles with the three different directors and writers you can really feel in this film. But these are just my thoughts and my opinions on Savage Land. That means I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section down below. Hit me up. Let me know what you think of this film. Is found footage one of your favorite subgenres? Is this one that you really love? I would love to discuss with you because we're all different. We all have different opinions. That's some of the best things about us. Be sure to like, subscribe, and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I post a video as well. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.